Ten years ago, the future of traditional brick and mortar retail still looked bright. The retailers in the US were worth collective $400 billion, and Amazon was only valued $17.5 billion. But disruption often comes without warning, and if there were warning signs, they went unheeded by retailers. Big box and department store sales plummeted, as consumers increasingly went online to do their shopping. In these years, it's estimated that revenues are equal to just below 60% of their totals in 2006. Retailers without the right strategy saw their market caps plummet. Sears went from being worth $27.8 billion to bankruptcy in this year, while Jesse Penny went from $18.1 billion to $350 million and preparing to file for bankruptcy. Here is the full damage over the last 10 years to brick and mortar stores. These numbers are not just bad, they are brutal. Amazon on the other hand did okay for itself with 4,500% growth. When all these retailers are going downward spiral, Walmart is a different story. Unlike so many brick and mortar chains, Walmart stock traded in all time high with 12 months gain of more than 60% in the late January 2018. And it's giving it back to Amazon. Amazon vs Walmart the battle of behemoths may often leave smaller retailers feeling like they're scrambling for crumbs from these two retail giants. Walmart dominates brick and mortar while Amazon dominates e-commerce, both at the forefront of one side of retail. In the era where Amazon steals most of the headlines, it's easy to forget about brick and mortar stores like Walmart. But even though the market values the Bezos e-commerce juggernaut at about three times the sum of Walmart, the blue big box store is very formidable in other ways. For example, the revenue and earnings are two areas where Walmart still reigns supreme. It's the largest company by revenue in the world. In 2017, Walmart accumulated $485 billion in revenue against Amazon's $177 billion. Walmart has bigger revenue than the GDP of Belgium, Norway, United Arab Emirates and many other countries. In fact, if Walmart was a country, it would be 25th in the world by GDP. That size enables Walmart to put a much bigger price squeeze on suppliers than Amazon in online shopping. That's not all though, Walmart is dominant in one other notable way. The company is the biggest private employer in America in a whooping 22 states. Basically, Walmart is an IKEA of America. The company has 1.5 million employees in the US. On the other side is Amazon. It seems to me as though Amazon is really becoming or trying to be by and large company in Pixar's Wall-E cartoon, which provides and controls everything. Well, if it doesn't seem so to you, let's focus on Amazon a bit. Amazon.com is the number one e-commerce site in the world and competing with Walmart and all other giant retailers. Amazon Web Services is the number one cloud computing platform in the world and competing with Microsoft, Google, Oracle and other tech companies. Amazon Prime Video might not be number one, but it's one of the top in the business and competing with Netflix and Hulu. The rocket company of Bezos Blue Origin is competing with Elon Musk's SpaceX and Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic. Jeff Bezos has a foothold even in newspaper business. He owns Washington Post. If you look at, Jeff Bezos is a living business card of capitalism. Hostility sparked when Walmart invaded the e-commerce space, forging a $3.3 billion deal to acquire Jet.com in 2016. Jet became the platform for Walmart's online shopping strategy. Then Amazon did some encroaching of his own in June 2017 when companies snapped up Whole Foods Market for $13.7 billion, its boldest entry into brick and mortar retail business. From that point on, it was clear, the lines separating traditional from online retail are disappearing and Amazon's embrace of Whole Foods Market put Walmart on notice that it intends to take a bigger piece of Walmart's retail pie. And Walmart gets more than a half of its sales from 700 billion US grocery sector. The trend pulling Amazon and Walmart closer and closer in combat is a concept called omnichannel retailing. The strategy is shared by all the large players in the retailing today. The goal is to allow customers to easily shop with the same retailer in an integrated manner both offline and online, including mobile. Consumers can buy groceries online and arrange to have them delivered or picked up. Mobile phones can be used as a payment device in the store. Among the most aggressive developers of the omnichannel strategy is China's e-commerce leader Alibaba Group. This shift in retailing, mostly from Amazon, has inflicted serious damage on traditional brick and mortar retailers that haven't kept pace. Amazon and Walmart are competing even in international scale. In 2018, Walmart bought 77% shares of Flipkart for $16 billion against Amazon's bid. Flipkart is India's e-commerce giant, head-to-head -head competitor to Amazon, and Walmart basically became the owner. Considering India has one of the world's fastest emerging markets, it was extremely crucial for Walmart and Amazon, and Walmart has got the upper hand. Before that, Amazon had bought Sook.com, the largest e-commerce in the Gulf region and Middle East. 
Amazon is ruthless when it comes to growth. Walmart and Best Buy are collectively throwing billions of dollars to get a foothold online. The competition is certainly fierce, but Amazon has still been able to achieve astronomical growth. In 2016, they had 38% of US e-commerce market. In 2018, in just two years, they now have 50%. Will Amazon keep out 60%, 70 or beyond after a couple of years? At this point, no one can tell. But regardless of where growth ends, such a level of dominance has never been achieved in the retail market like this before. As the two march forward, one thing is clear. Walmart isn't backing down and continues to try to carve off its place high up in a new era of e-commerce retailing. Recently, Walmart revealed it's entered a five-year deal with Microsoft, which will allow Walmart to use full range of Microsoft's cloud solutions. The agreement will also bring two companies together for new projects in machine learning AI, data platforms, furthering its ability to optimize the store experience. It's partnered with Google for voice shopping using Google Home. If you see the pattern, Walmart is partnering with every single competitor of Amazon, with Microsoft Cloud Business against Amazon Web Services, Google Home against Alexa. Several years ago, Walmart was on the defense and reacting to Amazon, and now they are playing offense. After buying Jet.com and Flipkart, everything changed and Amazon is now reacting to some of the things Walmart does. Outside its battleground, the prospects are getting dimmer. Not only for existing retailers trying to compete with these two behemoths, but for those who are hoping to get their foot in the door. One thing that must grind the gears of brick and mortar retailers is that they have turned into a showroom to Amazon. People go to department stores to see the electronics and go home and buy it from Amazon. Competitive barriers just continue to get higher and higher, unless you have a really unique and differentiated business model. It will become more and more difficult to justify why someone would not shop at Amazon or Walmart. At the end of the day, the your battle will be good for us consumers as price wars are keep going. There is a high probability that price wars are gonna continue to play out because there are not a whole lot of other mechanisms on which to compete to. And I personally think other retailers might catch up with Amazon, but they will never dethrone Amazon from the top. What do you think how this extraordinary battle of Amazon is going to play out? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. And guys, support this channel on Patreon. Currently, none of the videos are monetized yet, and your support would mean a lot. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button.